Welcome to yet another Action Script 2.0 tutorial. In this one, I'll explain arrays. And arrays are a really fancy way of storing information. Now, while we already learned string and number variables, but unfortunately to us programmers, arrays are a little bit different because they don't just store one data, they can store infinite data. Well, virtually infinite. So, to make an array, we would say var, and then we'd name our array, let's say var my array, equals, and then we have these square brackets. Square brackets look like this. Those kind of things. In the square brackets, whatever's inside of those is the data that my array is going to store. And we can store numbers and strings and we can even put more arrays inside of the array. And it's really simple to do this. We could have my array have our gro grocery list which might be oranges, apples, milk, and hot dogs. And that's our grocery list in an array form. This is the first data in the array, this is the second data in the array, this is the third, and that's the fourth. To access this data, this is a little bit more different than the normal accessing the string variable. We have to, um, if we're tracing it, we'd just say my array, we'd use the square brackets again, we wouldn't put a dot like we'd put with when we have nested movie clips or we're accessing a variable from inside a movie clip. We just have my array and then two square brackets around it and the number inside is the number that will pick which variable to access. It's a little bit different than what you'd expect though. I'll show you on a separate line. This is the data zero. That's how you'd access it, zero. And that is one. That is two and that's the data three. So it's a little weird than you'd expect. You'd expect that one to be one, wouldn't you? But it's actually zero and you have to get used to that if you're a programmer. So if we were accessing milk on our grocery list, my array, then we do my array two. We'd be accessing the second data value. And it's two because zero, one, two. Just because it's the third item doesn't mean it's three. It's actually two. And when we run this program, it'll trace milk. Just like we'd expect. We can do it with numbers also. And now we can access movie clips with a similar way. We could have a square and we could name it square and we'd have four of them. And we can access them a lot easier if we name them SQ1, SQ2, SQ3, and SQ4. And an easy way to um, access them is to is if you're using script and you're being really complex in your script, I'll show you an example later, then you could have a picked square and not have to use too much script. We can pick a square, which will pick square three, which will be square one, two, and three. We'll pick a random square like that, and we pick three. And then we could trace its y value using this number right here by saying trace this sq plus the picked square. 
And I know this is really complex sounding to people who don't script or program. But what this is saying is it is that together sq plus the pick square is sq then it's adding a 3 at the end. sq3. It's picking this one. That's its name. And when we're referring it with these brackets here, it's saying this and then using the square bracket, we put sq plus pick square dot y. And it will trace the third square's y because it's putting those two together and getting its information. And you'll see it will have 225.5. And if we pull up a rulers, I'll prove that that's what its x is. 200 and about 25.5. Like around there. And that's its y value. And you can now easily change this with that number. Now we're using the second one. And now we can use this script that we used here to easily collect our coins in our game we're making. Instead of having coin 1, coin 2, coin 3, and coin 4, we can just use an array of all the coins. Or not even using an array, but like we did here, we'll be using this. So we have a total amount of coins as four. So we can get rid of these three and we can make a for loop. Now for loops, they repeat some data. And sometimes they do it kind of annoyingly because you might mess it up. But for loops will repeat an amount of data using info you input to it. And it's F O R start bracket or start parenthesis end parenthesis whatever's in the brackets will happen on the for. And I'm just going to clean this up real quick. Inside the for loop it'll give you this right here. The init is what would happen or to make a variable. So we do var and we'd make a variable. I usually use i. var i equals 1. That's the very beginning of the um, variable. Now if we want the for loop to continue we have to have a condition that has to be true. Condition meaning the same thing is in this for loop, or if, ah, this if statement. So the condition could be if i is less than or equal to the max coins. So this, what would happen in here would be if this variable right here is less than or equal to the max coins, which is 4. So, and then the last thing we type into the for loop is every time that the for loop goes around what would happen to i well i would be added 1 i plus e or i plus plus and we'll auto format it and it will figure out it's true the weird thing about for loops is that you have these semicolons in between each of the information you give into it but this is what you have to get used to again this is what would happen at the very beginning of the for loop. We make a variable, which is 1. This is what would happen if this is what would happen for this to come in, or else the for loop's dead, and it just continues in the script. And this is what would happen every time the for loop is successful. And I'll show you in a separate file a simple example of a for loop. we'll say less than or equal to 10. So what would happen is it would start with i equals 1, it will go through because it's less than 10, the i would add 1 at the very end, it would add 1, and it would check if it's less than 10, it would go through it again, it would add 1, 
check if it's less than 10, add 1, and I'll show you what it would look like when we trace i. When we trace i, we'll give the number 1 through 10. Here we are, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And you could do, you can start on 10, and, you, and you'd have to change the script to make it greater than or equal to 1, and i minus minus. And we'll do the backwards, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And you might want to look into the help a little bit on this because it will give you some really helpful examples. Um, for loop. That should work. Okay, force, force statement. And here it is. It shows exactly some information and it will help you out here show you some extra information you need. And that is a for loop. Now I'm going to implement the for loop into my game to make it so you can collect all the coins. So var i equals 1, so it starts on coin 1. Which now we have to use that thing we used earlier, root, and then use the um, square brackets. You have to make this a text. You can't leave it coin or else it will think it's a variable. Coin plus i. That's the coin num. So we can change coin i to coin num if we want to make it easier to understand our script. And I'm pretty sure I lost you by now. But if you kind of know what you're doing, then you might understand this. And then same thing down here we'd have to do coin num to figure out all the coins. So what we have here is we have a simple for loop that plays for all of the four coins and checks if the ball is hitting it. And then it will do everything we had before except in a smaller amount of space. And it should work. Oh, coin one, coin two, coin three, coin four, hit. And now we win. And that is a very simple script that's really effective. And again, I love the flash help. It's really helpful, and if you ever get stuck, search things in it. It's really great. And our script is so much better now that we know for loops. And that's the end of the third tutorial to ActionScript 2.